you didn't stay here, but what is Wilmington? Why do you continue to come back? Well, you know, you, you talk about it. I said as a player, I was small, but I was slow. But the relationships that were created here in that period of time have been lifetime. You know, somebody asked me about their 16 or 17 players that I played with here tonight. And I'm telling you, 80, 90% of them, we've stayed in touch. They've been in Lexington. They, you know, we're on the phone. I just saw Dennis Tobin not two weeks ago uh, in New Jersey. So um, when you talk about success and failure, when you created that, the Sampsons, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Sampson and his wife were our host family for Dennis Tobin life. and stayed in touch. I was with Luke last night. So, um, you know, I've got great friends here. Joel Justice, what has he meant to you in kind of bringing him up that ladder of the coaching line? He's done great. And uh, it's funny when his father was the SID when I was here, which is Justice. Wait a minute. I know this name. And, and so, uh, but he's done great work. Um, you know, he's young, he's energetic, he's in the gym all the time with the kids, he creates great relationships, so he's doing great for us. And then, John, you know, what is the UNCW, how did that kind of kickstart your basketball career to where you are now and all the success that you've had? Well, one of the things I'm going to talk about tonight, you learn more from failure than you do success. And I'm going to have a message for the players more than anybody tonight. It's not going to be a long talk, but I'm, I'm going to, you know, you, you learn how are you going to react to things? Some of it is fate. You had no response. Nothing. Others are self-inflicted. Uh, sometimes decisions you make are not what they seem to be, and then you got to pivot and you got to keep moving. And does it beat you down, or does it add fuel to who you are? Um, in my case, I'm going to talk. I've had many, many failures as a coach, as a player, and. Um, but you try to use them, and you try to say, here are some reasons why it's good. My own team right now, my job for the players that I coach is to make them uncomfortable. Their job is to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Because I've got to make you feel a certain way that you've never felt before. Now you have to respond to that. And I'm going to coach you, not like you are right now, but where I see you which means it's going to be painful. It's not going to be what you're used to. It's not going to be comfortable. Um, but that's what my job is, and I don't shy away from it. And they're not always happy with me, but I'm not always happy with them. At the end of the day, we got good people that know I care about them, and, which is why our players have had the success that they've had. It's funny. So Roy Williams coming here this year after speaking two years ago. Brad Brownell brought Clemson here. You're speaking tonight. Does that mean Kentucky comes later to Trask Coliseum sometime? No. No. <laughs> not happening. But I do watch them closely. I always have. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, CBD doesn't need me to come here. He doesn't, he doesn't need me to come here. He's got a heck of a program. This campus, when we were here, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, there were 3,500 students. Like, we knew each other's names. Everybody. And, and now I see this campus, and I can't even believe it's the same place that we were here. And I've come back just about every year, so I see it. But um, what they've done, I, I'm going to tell you that all 50 states, 1,300 on the college boards. Oh, well, none of my teammates are I could have been here. I can tell you right now, none of us. This place, for students, for this city, for this state, what it's done and what it's become, it's, it's amazing. And, and I'm happy for the people. Do you have any certain uh, favorite playing memories from your time at UNCW or anything that stands Somebody out? Somebody said, uh, George, George's daughter, Roundtree's daughter, said, I used to watch you play. I said, you must have looked really hard to see me play it. But, no, I look, I enjoyed the training. Um, and, and Coach Gibson was doing stuff even back then that was ahead of his time, um, whether it be conditioning and training. And we didn't have weight strength coaches. We didn't have – you know, video and all the other stuff, but he was ahead of his time and a terrific basketball coach. So uh, I remember playing in Alaska. I mean, walking to the gym and the snow was like above our heads <laughs> cut out. I can remember that. I think we were in Fairbanks playing. I went back with my UMass team to Anchorage. 
Um, so, thank you, sir. Thank you.